welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello. This channel is all about me, fun, randomness, and craziness. If you're returning, it is so nice to see you. Thank you so much for following me along this crazy, hectic journey of mine, and I really, really value all of your support. Now, this video is brought to you in partnership with Ana Luisa. I really appreciate my partnerships with Ana Luisa because I really do align with their goals and values as a company, but also they take really good care of their influencers. I thought that partnering my Ana Luisa partnership with this topic would be perfect. So as I always do when I partner with Ana Luisa, I'm gonna give you a rundown on some of the jewelry that they sent me, some of the details about their sale going on, and then we're gonna get into it, sweetie. So so really quickly before I get into the jewelry, they are doing a Black Friday sale. So between November 1st and the 17th, if you shop with them, use my code that is here on the screen. It'll also be at the end of the video. You can use that code for 20% off of the entire site, okay? Every single thing you can find. Rings, necklaces, jewelry holders, everything on the site, you guys. It's so rare for them to do a sale on every single item. So that means go ham, have fun, see what you can get. All of the jewelry is sustainable it's affordable and it's amazing quality like I said I never promote things that I'm not personally a fan of I got this bracelet from um, a partnership I did with them last year and I have not taken it off and it's still holding up I have so much of the I have many pieces of their jewelry and I love all of it and I always say their earrings are perfect for an ear party and I, an ear party is just basically a combination of a bunch of random earrings on your ear so I love their dainty pieces they are just is such a great company to work with and I love love the styles of their pieces so let's get into some of the things that I have and like I said all the information will be down in the description if you have any questions DM me message me whatever you got to do I will put every single name of the of the items that I have down in the description box but look how cute these studs are they're like open-ended studs let me see if I can focus and they loop in and oh my god like so freaking cute they're perfect for an ear party you guys they're super comfortable and like I've been like playing with them to see if they'll fall out and they have not they grip your lobe and they're just so dainty so cute and so feminine I love everything about their jewelry let me move this piece of hair I love them so much you guys so Go check those out. Let me get into these other pieces really quick. So I also picked out these really cool hexagon shaped studs. I call them studs, but they're like mini hoops. They are so freaking cute, you guys. I put these in for some TikTok videos that I made um, about Ana Luisa jewelry, and they are snug, and they're like perfect enough. I don't like really big hoops anymore, and I think it's because I'm getting older, but they also show a great amount outside of my round face. I have a very round face, so sometimes my ears get hidden, and my ears are really small, but these show on the side of my round face, and because my ears are so small, they're the perfect hoop for my ear. So I really, really like these. These are also down in the description, and let's get into the last one. So of course I have to go with another mini hoop. So these are basically, I have some like this, but I have really small ones. Oop, hold on. I'm gonna show y'all exactly what they look like. Okay, can you see that? Yeah, it's focusing. So these are also another cute mini hoop. I got all gold hardware, and I like these because I have a version of these that I was using on the second and third holes of my ear, but these are perfect for the main lobe because they're a little bit bigger, but they're still super, super thin, and they are just, they're dainty. I'm so into dainty jewelry, and I really love just being able to combine that with a chunky necklace or a really pretty patterned skirt. So I am all about Ana Luisa. I love everything that they stand for. I love everything that they produce. All of their designs are gorgeous, you guys, gorgeous. So with that said, make sure you use my code, visit the link down in the description box, buy the things that I have tried, or try something new. And whatever you try, tag me, take a picture, let me know what you got. Make sure you buy in time for Christmas, Thanksgiving, or Black Friday, whatever. But buy by November 17th so you get 20% off. 20% off of an already affordable company means bigger savings for you, sweetie. So. Don't say I didn't tell you, because I got my jewelry. What you got?
Hmm, what you got? Nothing. Okay? So let me know how you guys like their stuff. Again, I'll mention everything again at the end of the video. Now let's get into this one. Okay, so I wanted to make a video about working full time as an influencer and working full time as a normal person. I have been trying to find ways to cross over into influencing for quite some time now. I'd say about two, going on three years. Since 2019, I decided that this is a journey I kind of want to embark on, and it's not easy whatsoever, okay? So I moved to Los Angeles in March of 2020 in the middle of the panorama, and I did not have a job. I did have my YouTube channel, but I was only like maybe 500 subscribers in, and my content was trying to conceive a baby. So I did not have anywhere near the following that I have now when I first made the decision that I wanted to kind of start an influencing journey. So first, I, have, I had to have a job, period. Like, being an influencer pays your bills when you reach a certain level and reach a certain status, and I am nowhere near there. I still only have, I have less than 3,000 followers still on Instagram, okay? TikTok and YouTube are different, and uh, those are growing at a much more faster rate. YouTube has kind of hit a standstill, but there's potential in TikTok as well. Um, so I'm trying to figure out, okay, how do I monetize this? All these people are clearly tuned into what I have to say, so what can I, what do I do now? What do I do with that? So, of course, I was like, okay, I'm gonna galvanize these people. I'm going to create my own merch line, which I did, shop Takaja, Takaja.com. But when it comes to influencing, I knew I wanted to partner with brands that have similar values as me, and I wanted to be the face of something. I wanted to be an ambassador of something. And I noticed more brands were reaching out to work with me, and I was so excited but I never really considered myself an influencer until this year. It had a negative connotation to me because like, it's like, do these people work? But they absolutely do. I'm telling you right now, creating content is a full-time job. And that's why I want to make this video about being a full-time influencer and being a full-time normal working person. So the biggest question I get all the time because I spent almost the whole month of September out of town, I was not in LA, I went to New York Fashion Week, I went to South Carolina twice, I went to Atlanta, Georgia, I went to Connecticut, I was gone all of September and the first half of October. How do I do it? Where's the money coming from? Where do you get all this PTO? Well, guess what, honey? <laughs> I'm still trying to figure it out. So here's a few things that I do and have done in order to make this influence, this full-time influencing journey happen with my full-time job. The first thing I do is I work from home. So if you are trying to be a full-time influencer and you have a job that does not, not require you to work from home, some of these tips may not work. I personally work from home because of the pandemic and I don't think we will be going back into the office. So that has been a huge, huge, huge help towards my content creation journey because I can create content anywhere and I can work from anywhere. So if I get invited to a trip or I wanna go on a trip, I don't have to take PTO. What I usually do is I try to find nighttime flights. So let's say I'm going to New York. I will try to find a flight that leaves like 5 or 6 p.m. from Los Angeles. So I will arrive in New York around 9 a.m., which is 6 a.m. California time. And then I just have to stay up and make those hours work. Usually when I'm on the East Coast, my hours feel a lot longer, but I start the workday at 12 and I end the workday at 9, which is basically 9 to 6 here on the West Coast. It is not easy, however, taking a meeting that's at 6 o'clock at night on the East Coast or 9 o'clock at night on East Coast time and it's only 6 o'clock West Coast time. You have, to, you have to be very meticulous with your calendar, okay? So when it comes to flights, I usually do nighttime flights and weekend flights. When it comes to my calendar planning, I try my best to make sure all of my meetings are like bunched together. I hate spaced out meetings because usually if I'm 
traveling somewhere, I'm doing something else at the same time. So I'd rather just have a huge chunk of meetings all at once and then boom, I have a little bit of freedom even though I'm still on the clock. I don't feel as burdened to take my laptop with me everywhere or being stuck to one place. That has been super helpful. When I was in New York for Fashion Week, I kept all of my meetings bunched together but also I kept my laptop with me at the fashion shows and things like that because I'm still at work but I still have the opportunity to attend such a great event. And I think the biggest thing that I do is I don't tell anyone of my business at work, period, point blank. So if I'm going to New York for Fashion Week and I'm not taking any time off, that's none of their business. As long as my work is still getting done, which it always does, and as long as I'm clocking in on time and I'm staying online when I need to, there's, in my opinion, no reason why anyone needs to know where I'm at and what I'm doing. All of it's getting done. I'm not missing any calls. I'm not missing any trainings. It's my business. And I feel like more companies need to operate on that. Going into the office has been proven to be ineffective at some point, in my opinion, because of the pandemic. So why do I need to be here? When I, I would love to be, it's, it's hard, don't get me wrong, but working at the Moschino show with my laptop, taking messages and answering emails, but being at the Moschino fashion show, it was great. It was like an adrenaline rush. Yes, it's hard to juggle all the balls, but guess what? I did it and I felt good doing it. So as long as you know yourself, that's what will really be helpful. Also, when I am in Los Angeles and I'm home and I'm not traveling, I have certain times and dates for content creation days. So today is Saturday and I'm knocking out all of my content for the next six to seven weeks because I know my job can sometimes get hectic, or hectic around this time of year. So I'm knocking out as many TikToks as I can, I'm knocking out as many YouTube videos as I can, and I'm knocking out as many pieces of content as I can because life gets hectic. I'm also thinking about picking up another part-time job, so I have to keep my schedule as meticulous as possible and have to stick to it because I am super busy. When you are pursuing being a full-time content creator or a full-time influencer, you are kind of like, you You have to do the TikTok trends and the YouTube trends and you have to know what's coming up and you have to stay on top of it. So I always carve out a chunk of space every weekend and night times to do some type of content, whether it's editing, whether it's planning and things like that. So here's an example of how my week usually works and if you guys wanna follow it, sure, let me know. I can send you kind of my content calendar. To make all this work, I literally wake up every day between four to six, between that time. I have to have gym time, gym time I have to have motive, uh, meditation time, and I have to cook breakfast every morning. That is like my thing, I have to do it. But Monday through Friday, I work 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., so I just do that. But in between time, because I usually pre-record a lot of stuff, I will edit photos or edit TikToks, post, and then go back to work. But also, every night, I try to edit one YouTube video and upload it and schedule it so it's off of my plate. So I work from nine to six and then I take about an hour and a half break after that to like take a shower, eat dinner and watch something. And then from about 7.30 to 9.30 or 10, I do content, pure content, planning, creation and things like that. And I usually do my content planning in my notebook which is right here. I usually do that on Mondays and Tuesdays and I make sure I edit between Tuesdays and Thursdays. I try to get all my editing done and then I have a post schedule. So I try to stay on all of my feeds on all of these platforms very, very regularly because algorithms, okay? And I consider that being a full-time influencer even though I'm not making, replacing my current salary with this work yet, I consider that being a full-time influencer because I'm doing some type of content creation or content planning on a daily basis. And, you know, if I didn't have my normal job, I think I can do so much better when it comes to editing and creating content and things like that. But I'm doing the best I can and I know that other people can do it. It's not easy, it's definitely a lot to juggle, but you can do it if you want to. And I'm so big on manifestation and I'm so big on making sure that I take my time and I speak kind to of myself because I know this is gonna be a reality for me one day. I have a friend who's a full-time model and content creator and influencer and it's a lot of damn work. 
So, you know, I'm being patient with the universe. I'm being patient with myself and letting all these things come as they're supposed to. It's totally doable though. So with that said, I hope some of my tips and tricks helped out. I'm kind of rambling, but these are things that I do on a weekly base basis. If you're interested in learning more about how I manage my schedule, please contact me and I'm down to do like a Google Meet or a Zoom call or whatever. We can kind of talk it out and hold each other accountable. Once again, here we are. I'm gonna wrap up with Anna Luisa, of course. If you like the pieces that I'm wearing, my little studs or the, uh, the items that I showed you in the beginning, please Please use my code and click the link down in the in the description box below. Make sure you shop by November 17th for 20% off of your purchase, okay? They're gonna have more deals throughout the holidays and throughout the month, but I would say shop by November 17th so you can get 20% off using my code, okay, okay, okay. And if you buy, please let me know which items you bought and which ones you really liked. I'm so excited, you guys are amazing and thank you so much for supporting. Please follow me on all socials. Please, please, please shop to Kaija, especially for the holidays. Get, get somebody this a crazy shirt, okay? Shop to Kaija, to Thank you guys, love you so much. Mwah. Bye.